Have you ever noticed that the Porsche 911 is very similar to the original 1938 Volkswagen Beetle? And even more so that the Beetle was pretty much a copy of a Tatra? Let's find out together how one man's love for a luxury Tatra transformed into the best sports car in the world. Porsche as a company was founded in 1931, originally offering motor vehicle development work and consulting. Their first car was yet to come years later. One of the first assignments came from the Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, who wanted a cheap, simple people's car to be practical enough for a common folk. Hence they called it a Volkswagen, a folks vehicle. This idea was mainly Hitler's and Porsche's, but there were some hints and design sketches of such a car previously yet since 1925 by Béla Bahrain, an Austro-Hungarian designer who actually had more patents than Thomas Edison. There was a guy called Hans Ledwinka, an Austrian automobile designer who worked for Tatra for many years, from 1921 to 1937, and he was in charge of the design development. There were some features he invented in Tatras, a backbone chassis, fully independent suspension and a rear-mounted air-cooled engine. Hitler was a keen automobile fan and had multiple meetings with Ledwinka. He loved Tatras and didn't hesitate to tell Porsche, this is the car for my roads. Porsche did not deny that they looked over each other's shoulders with Ledwinka while he designed the Beetle and that is quite obvious looking at the final version. In 1931, a Tatra V570 prototype was shown to the public featuring a rear-mounted air-cooled box engine, which later evolved into a production Tatra T97 in 1936. However, the 18-horsepower twin-cylinder was swapped for a 40-horsepower four-banger of the box design. It was sold besides the Tatra T77A and Tatra T87, compared to both, it was the least powerful, but the most lightweight. Tatra had various patents, one of them being a more effective way of cooling the rear-mounted engine. Before World War II, Tatra filed a suit of infringement against Porsche out of 10 patents. While Porsche was open to paying a settlement, Hitler suggested he would solve the problem his way and invaded Czechoslovakia in 1938, occupying the Sudetenland. The lawsuit was stopped and the factory came under a Nazi management since October 1938. Tatra was told to remove their cars from 1939 Berlin Auto Salon and the infringement was sold many years later after the war. Volkswagen eventually paid 1 million Deutsche Marks in 1965 an equal payment to over 2.1 million US dollars in 2021. The first Porsche automobile, at least considered by many, was conceived in 1938 with the Type 64 racing car. The 64 shared most of the mechanical parts from the Beetle, and it is quite clear where an inspiration of the 64 design language originates. There was also an attempt to make it a mid-engine 1.5 liter V10 sports car, but in 1938 it was just not a good time for such a production model. Instead, the very first Porsche model became the 356. The 356 was a brainchild of Porsche's son, Ferdinand Ferry Porsche, and later in a 1972 magazine interview he stated how he enjoyed a lightweight powerful car rather than a heavy, powerful automobile when asked why he developed it the way he did. The original 356 was a mid-rear engine, but the production model had the engine completely in the rear section. The Porsche 356 is an iconic model right now, with many replicas around the world, and it was the predecessor to the legendary Porsche 911 and 912. The Porsche 911 stayed true to the original Beetle concept, rear-placed engine, rear-wheel drive, 
and air cooling with the help of oil cooling. In theory, the rear-mounted engine is the worst possible automobile layout, as although it provides great traction under load, it can be very tricky and deadly to manage under heavy braking with such a heavy rear end. Therefore, it is not the best setup for a sports car, but we know Porsche. And Porsche was the one who managed to fine-tune it so much that they can not only keep up, but also smash the competition. Porsche is unique in today's world, but the way here was not so clean and fair. I love both Porsche and Tatra, and I wanted to make this video to show you just how the automotive world could have been different if Ferdinand's Porsche's thinking was also slightly different. Setting this aside, we can thank him for the creating one of the most competitive and incredible automobile company in the world. I have received a plenty of positive feedback on the Saab history video and that's why I decided to make this video as well. If you loved it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with my content. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers!